From BLC Studios in Mankato, Minnesota, this is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan, with your host, Shane Fred. Welcome to the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan. My name is Shane Frederick. I'm the host, and I'm joined today. Uh, we got a full room in the studio today with uh, the top scoring line in the country, I think, if the stats uh, add up correctly. Uh, we'll go uh, left to right with Cade Borchert, Julian Napravnik, and Nathan Smith from the Minnesota State Mavericks. How are you guys doing today? Really good. How are you? Uh, doing great. Nice to have uh, you guys on. You've all been on individually this season and now you're here together as a trio. Um, I, you know, I, I guess, uh, you're, you're mentioned earlier, a, a triplets line. Do you guys have a line for your, a name for your line, a nickname for your line? I, I have to ask that right off the bat. Oh uh, no. Has anyone come up with one yet? <laughs> I haven't heard one. Yeah, I haven't heard nope. one. Yeah. It's the, blue, the blue line, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the blue line. That's yeah, our, uh, you guys our wear the color in practice. blue jerseys in practice. All right. It's kind of boring, but you know, we'll, we'll have to come up with something <laughs> <laughs> before, now that the playoffs have started. Um, uh, we're going into the playoffs. The CCHA playoffs begin this week with the Mavericks uh, taking on St. Thomas. Of course, the Mavericks won the McNaughton Cup and got the number one seed and home ice throughout the tournament. And uh, they're coming off uh, their 10th and 11th wins in a row with a sweep at Michigan Tech, uh, taking five of six points because one of those games was an overtime win. Um, let me just ask you guys a little bit about playing tech. Um, I talked to Jack McNeely and Reggie Lutz last week going into the series about the, how tough that would be. Uh, you guys have played them four times this year, swept the series, but every game was essentially a two, one game, two overtime games. One was three, one with an empty netter. Um, they're the second place team in the league. If everything goes uh, to chalk, uh, you guys will play them in a championship game in a few weeks. Um, what's it like playing them? What kind of rivalry do you guys have with Michigan tech? Nathan, uh, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously they're they're second in our division. Um, they kind of play similar to us uh, in a way, like where they defend pretty hard. Uh, they have a really good goaltender, um, but I mean, at the same time, they you know they can score on the on the chances that they get, and um, that's that's kind of how the game was played this this past weekend. Um, it was super defensive, and uh, I think. Um, I mean, both goalies played really well, I would say, and uh, just the opportunities that each team got, we capitalized on them. So, You guys got behind both games. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, you don't want to start off getting uh, behind uh, in a game, but to kind of have to claw your way back in and find a way to win a game um, has to show probably a little bit of positivity for the way you guys are playing right now. Right, Caden? You want to take, yeah. ta tackle that one? Yeah, obviously you, you never want to go down and uh, it's something we take pride in is getting a good start and I think we struggled with it both games um, but it kind of shows a little bit more about our team and um, that we're able to bounce back from that and I, I think we had uh, the second half of both games we played really well so obviously we want to take pride in those starts and uh, make sure especially in playoffs when you never know when the season's on the line um, you want to take uh, have good starts but I think it's something we're going to keep working on hopefully uh, down the road we'll keep you in uh, better starts. How about for you, Julian? You scored the overtime winner on uh, Friday night, and uh, just did you feel like that's kind of how that series went for you guys, uh, just trying to find a way to, to get your legs under you and, and kind of take over the game at some point? Um, yeah, I mean, like like Smitty said, they played pretty similar to us, and then just uh, I think that just reflected on how the game went, just going to overtime, um, just just a 1-1 game, 2-1 ga two, two game, what was it, 1-1? One, one, yeah, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, going into overtime, we kind of kind of knew it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty close. Uh, I think just I'm I don't know just. <laughs> How do you guys like playing three on three overtime? It just uh, let me ask you that because obviously they're, they're, that's always been up for debate, and some coaches love it, some don't. I, I think your coach uh, Mike Hastings does like it, and certainly likes the idea that it prepares you for the next levels of hockey, uh, where where they play three on three overtime. But uh, it seems like it's exciting for the fans to watch. Um, you guys have had some success in in, in that, uh, um, you know, a couple times against Tech with uh, Nathan, you scoring a, a, an overtime winner back in uh, December and um, making the really nice heads up pass to Julian for the game winner on Friday night. Do you guys like playing three on three over overtime? Do you like playing that that style? 
Yeah, I mean, I personally love it. I know these guys do too. Um, I think just players that play the way we do, and uh, we love time and space. And, and three three on three, it's obviously a lot more time and space. And, um, you know, we can create more and kind of cut off people and pick people and stuff like that just to kind of create more space. And um, so I think people like us, and there's a couple other guys on our team who really thrive in three on three. Yeah, what what do you what do you guys think? What 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 makes it fun? Yeah, I think both of our answers are probably similar to that. Uh, we love it, um, having the puck more, just less guys out there. So I think it's it's <coughs> definitely fun for the fans. You can see they're off their seats, and um, yeah, uh, I know we love it. Hey, and and Julian, you know it's it's funny. I mean, you got to kind of cash in on a really good play by Nathan there, and you don't see a lot of physical play necessarily in three on three, but Nathan play, makes a, a physical play behind the net to uh, kind of jar the puck loose and, and get it and then uh, I mean, probably had an open shot himself but uh, saw you wide open on the back door and, and, and made the easy pass for the for the easy goal and, and, and the game winner. Yeah I, uh, I actually didn't really see how he got that puck because I, I just turned around when he uh, was kind of battling that guy behind the net so um, yeah I think that was the first body contact in that over time <laughs> like, since you said there's not a lot of contact in there but just pickpocket that guy like just won the battle and then just had a two and zero in front of the net there. I, I think people sometimes don't realize like how tired players can be at the end of a game where you go into overtime and, and now you're playing three on three open <laughs> ice. There's more skating. Um, there's opportunities for mistakes to happen, line changes, uh, getting caught out there too long, and and especially after playing a full sixty minute game prior to that. How how do you prepare for? Uh, f- for that and I know right, I mean that's fun to talk about now because you know <laughs> going forward there aren't going to be any more three on three games um, uh, unless there's a whole bunch of penalties but uh, y- you know how, how do you prepare for that and, and make sure that you're 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 ready for it both uh, physically and uh, just making sure that you know you're playing the right way yeah I mean I think that's another reason why we love three on three so much is because um I would say more often than not, we're in better shape than the other team. And uh, I mean, aside from overtime, even even in the third period, I think we we're we're a good third period team, and that's because we're in better shape and better condition than most of the other teams. And I mean, that just leads into overtime too. And you know, if we're if we're really hemming them in in the third period, and we happen to take uh, take them to overtime, then I mean, I we, we all like our chances because we're in better shape. I mean, we have the players to win in three on three and guys who just know how to play three on three. So um, I think that's a big part of it. You guys really pride yourselves on the, your, the condition that you guys are in. It seems like that's been a, a staple of uh, Minnesota State hockey for a long time. I agree. Yeah, I mean, our, hard, our practices are harder than games, so everyone literally hates practice. <laughs> so um, that definitely, I mean, that's a big factor in why we're in better shape than other teams. Sure. You guys hate practice too? Uh, Nathan just told told us that you guys did that everybody did. So I just want to make sure that everybody's on I'm the record. I'm speaking for the whole team right now. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a grind. Yeah, so I would <laughs> agree with that. Just it's always seemed like you're having some fun out there, though. At times, yeah, depends on Take the day. The best out of it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we love the game. So absolutely. Um, well, let me. Uh, I don't want to sing uh, signal a uh, signal uh, single you out too much, Nathan. But uh, I want to ask you a little bit about your your experience uh, playing in the Olympics. Uh, these guys missed you for a few weeks, and uh, you got an opportunity to play for Team USA and go over to China with Coach Hastings and 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 be be a part of it. And I know uh, there's probably some disappointment with not uh, not uh, being able to compete for a medal. Um, but uh, just can you talk about that whole experience and what that was like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was a dream come true, really. Um, you know, my whole life I've just hoped and dreamed of playing in the Olympics. And I think any time you can wear the red, white, and blue on no matter what the stage, uh, and this one just so happened to be the biggest stage, um, it's pretty special. Uh, obviously, like you said, didn't, you know, end the way we wanted it to, but uh, we had a really good team. We had a great group of, gu- great group of guys. Um, I mean, the, the villages and pretty much the whole experience for what it was like, what it was worth like as far as being in the bubble and all the COVID restrictions and what we were allowed to do and not able to do um I mean it was it was a blast really I mean I got to make new friends like I said all the guys are great the villages are great um they had five bedroom apartments three bathrooms so kind of had our own space and uh yeah, I mean, needless to say, we had a we had a good time. Did you get to go see a lot of other events? I th- it seemed like there, I read a couple of good stories about how because there were so few 
spectators at uh, you know a lot of those events. A lot of the spectators ended up being other athletes. Yeah, uh, I think they had some like Chinese like citizens and stuff there that were mm-hmm. they were also at the uh, the the other events, and um, we were able to go. Like we had to have tickets at times, and other times we didn't. So. Um, you just had to catch a bus, really, and you can go see whatever one you wanted. Um, all, like, the half pipe and, like, the like the stuff that they do in the mountains, like the skiing, the snowboarding, all was, like, four hours away. Um, but the coolest thing I got to see was the big air. Mm. And I don't know if you know what it is, but they just go down a huge hill and up a big jump and just do, like, a bunch of tricks. Right. The ski uh, with, yeah. on skis, right? Not the snow, the skiers or the snowboarders? Well, they did both. both. I actually went just, just to the skiing. Okay. Um, and it was just, I mean, I don't know how these people do it. Like... <laughs> I just watch them and I'm like, you guys are insane. (laughs) But I'm sure they say the same thing about other events and maybe even us. So um, it's just cool to see like other athletes, you know, best in the world get to do what they love to do. What, you know, what was it like for you to, to miss the time um, and and be away Mm -hmm. from your team? And um, especially that Bemidji series, I think when not only did they clinch the McNaughton cup, but your coach got to make it back. And it sounded like you had probably had a pretty good experience being able to stay there for closing ceremony. So it wasn't like you were stuck in an airport or something, but what, you know, did you follow that from afar with the time change or, you know, how, how did you kind of handle that weekend? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously it sucks that I wasn't able to be here to experience the McNaughton cup, especially the fifth one. Um, but I mean, we did, we did have a good time uh, up there <laughs> and partied for, a little bit after I uh, got in a little bit of trouble, but uh, it was def- it was definitely worth it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I tried my best considering the time change. I think it was really weird because when I was waking up, it was like two hours and then the guys were going to bed. So it was like, it was just such a big time difference. I think it was 14 hours. Um, but yeah, I did keep up with the scores as much as I could. And um, just, I mean, they were, they were super supportive with me going over, not just them, but like the whole team. Um, so I'm really appreciative of that. And, uh, yeah, I kept up with the scores. I was just praying that they would, they would pull it out. And when I looked, it was like five one. I'm like, all right, cool. We got it in the bag. <laughs> so it was funny. Uh, I, you know, asked Julian, um, after, uh, one of those games against Bemidji about, um, uh, you know, playing and the, the chemistry that you guys have. Um, and uh, uh, Brendan Furry was playing between uh, you guys th- that weekend and you guys had a lot of success. And uh, Julian talked a lot about just kind of the chemistry and really how you guys can really play kind of with anybody. And I noticed the line chart on Friday night at Tech that they, they kept uh, um, Furry between you two. Um, but by some point in the game, uh, number eight was suddenly back uh, with you guys and the band was back together. What <laughs> is there more chemistry with you three? would you say and Cade maybe you can bring that up talk about that first or or do you really see kind of a a, a nice mix and match out there yeah I mean I I think it doesn't really matter we have so many good guys in this team Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah we've played together longer than with Brendan but when uh, Smitty went overseas uh, we played with uh, Furs and uh, we had we had some good chemistry and things were going well too so I think we just kind of kept that um, going to the tech game and then we weren't uh, we had not I don't think we had scored yet we switched it back just to kind of change some stuff up Mm mm-hmm and um, yeah, they both ended up. They had both the goals, and right. I wasn't out for any of them. So oh, you weren't. <laughs> <Thanks, boys. laughs> so you were. You weren't out there. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't. yeah, they scored the two shifts. You're waiting for your change to, <laughs> yeah. to change to come no, off the ice but, there. Or? <laughs> yeah, no, both both him and Furs, and like like I said, I mean, it's kind of just the mentality we have on our team. Next guy up, and um, obviously we were so proud of him going over there and stuff. But I never thought we were never worried about what we were going to play with or yeah. whatever. It's just kind of we knew the way we play and stuff. And there's so many good guys in our team that we'd be fine. But as far as the three of you go, what kind of, is, is there a certain chemistry? Is there a certain, you know, because of the, the, you guys playing together as long as you have and Julian, maybe you can talk a little bit about this. What, what is it about the three of you that kind of, where you see kind of a knack uh, for scoring? I mean, right now I, I, I believe uh, uh, Julian and Nathan have the exact same uh, scoring numbers with um, I think it's 17 goals, 27 assists, I believe, for 44 points. And uh, I think Cade's at 38 points or something like that. I think we're um, – I don't have the stats right in front of me, so um, correct me if I'm wrong. Send me a tweet. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but, you know, do you, do you sense some chemistry out there? And just from playing – I'm sure the practices and the, just the number of hours that you've spent together has, has really just, you know, found a way to – where you get a real knack out there for the way you've played. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would agree with that. Like, we're clicking definitely in some way. Uh, that's probably the second year we're playing together. So the time is really an uh, important part of our chemistry. And uh, like you said, like, we're practicing together. We're doing 
a lot of stuff together, like be it power play, everything, like just talking about plays, talking about like changes that we have. And uh, I think just over time that chemistry is coming along. So uh, I think that's that's the biggest part. And, and Nathan, for you, what was it like to get back, you know, in a college game post Olympics and, and get back with these guys or, or whoever you were, were happened to be skating with on the weekend? Did, did it feel different than the playing in the Olympics? Did it, did it, did you, you know, did it feel any kind of change in style or, or just the way things seemed being back with your team or the way the opponents were? I mean, yeah, in China, uh, in the Olympics, it was the game was a little bit faster. Um, guys had better sticks defensively, and uh, I think that's just you know the way it is. The the as you go up in levels, um, but yeah, it was it was super nice to get back to the guys and back to like a routine. I would say. Um, I mean, like they've been saying, you know, it's it's we've been playing together for two years now, and the chemistry that we have is just pretty much next to none, right? And I mean, we. We know what each other likes. We know what each other like does on the ice in certain situations and where to be when they're doing that kind of stuff. And so it was it was nice to have that chemistry back. And um, uh, it was just a little bit harder up there, right? We we only had like three weeks to kind of play with each other. And um, granted, it's guys like I've known um, playing mm -hmm. against some some with in college hockey. And um, so I mean, I, I kind of know like what they do and stuff like that. But it's not the same as playing with two guys you've been playing with for two years. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, it was it was nice to get back. Um, you know, you talk, we, we talked a lot about the, you know, just you, you guys mentioned the chemistry and obviously the depth of the team and and, and really as, as good as your line's been, you're, you're just seeing a lot of different guys do a lot of different things every night. Um, I still think one of my favorite stats, and two guys here might not uh, love this stat, but the fact that your team has five hat tricks this season – and uh, none of them have been Nathan Smith or Julian Napravnik. I think one of them was Cade Borchert, though, right? Cade <laughs> <laughs> <Eddie Borch. laughs> <laughs> But I, I just think that's interesting for, you know, two of the top scorers in the nation uh, are sitting here and haven't had a hat trick, but uh, five of their teammates, five different guys have had hat, hat tricks this season. And uh, I know it's a little different when a guy has two and it's the third period, and, you know, you can tell people are trying to, get that third one for, for someone. But, uh, um, anybody else find that, uh, somewhat ironic? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think Wyatt yeah. specifically Wyatt, Wyatt, in, Wyatt, in, Wyatt, in, sure. guys going yeah, I, I get that guy. Shout out there. Make sure they don't forget. <laughs> Wyatt Ahmet, the <laughs> defenseman who has, uh, I think five career goals, including three in that game <laughs> earlier this year. This is a tough uh, conversation. For <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you know it, we're trying to have some fun here too. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's 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 really not like a huge deal. Um, I mean, obviously, when the team's having success, and it's like when Wyatt scored his, I think you know I, there wasn't one person who was like, "Oh my God, he scored!" That. Like, <laughs> no, we were all like super pumped for him. Um, obviously, you know, we know he has like five or six career goals, <laughs> but like it was that's why it, that's why it made it so much cooler to see that he, he got one and. Uh, I mean, Julian's had multiple two goal games. I think I've had maybe one or two, but um, you know, I mean, it's not something that's in the back of our head like, oh, mm -hmm. we have to get a hat trick, right? We're just trying to do our job and you know, hopefully produce. And I think the, the having fun with that story or, or finding it ironic is not so much um, making fun of you guys as much as it is really just kind of a uh, an example of the depth on your team. If you look at the list of hat tricks scored by Minnesota State players over the years. I mean, there's been a lot of seasons where there hasn't been anybody or there's maybe been one, and uh, you guys have five this year. And just and plus, you know, two guys in the 40s, uh, you know, who, who could easily get to 50 point, uh, have 50 point plus seasons. And uh, I just think uh, it, it just kind of goes to show, you know, why you guys are number one in the nation and um, really what, what your team is founded upon. And it's not necessarily... Uh, one line team or a one player team, but a but really a a, a full depth of forwards, defensemen, and obviously a a pretty darn good goaltender. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, kind of going on on that. You, if you can see uh, on our team, like talking about depth wise, like uh, if you see on our uh, scoring list, there's probably like ten guys that are like over twenty points, and it just shows us like how. How deep we are! How that everybody, every line can score a goal. It's not depending on one or two lines. So that just shows how uh, how deep we can be, and that every line can be a, can be a factor, can be a game changer. 
you're going into the playoffs now. Um, how how do you think things change? You know, going forward, or you know, how does your mindset change? Uh, um, you know, you you get you get a two out of three weekend this weekend against St. Thomas. Um, if you advance, you, there's a single uh, semifinal game um, by itself, and then a single championship game. Uh, you know you're in the NCAA tournament, so you're probably, you know, not only you're playing for a playoff championship, which which I'm sure you want, um, but also kind of maintaining either whether it's that number one pairwise spot or certainly a top a top four where you would get a number one seed. Um, but what 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 is the mentality uh, like for this team going into the postseason? Do do things change? Do you flip a different different kind of switch? Uh, does coach flip a different kind of switch when the things start? Maybe Cade, you want to uh, start with that or? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's mindset is it's just a new season. Uh, Coach kind of talked about it today before practice. It's a new season, and like St. Thomas, they got nothing to lose, and they're going to be hungry, and they've been playing well. Mm -hmm. Uh, They've been playing some good hockey, and so a bunch of other teams in our um, in the CCHA. Um, So we got to be ready. It's a new season, and every every team has different mindsets now. And like I said, they got nothing to lose, so they're going to be coming after us, and our target's just getting bigger, and everyone wants to beat us. So yeah, I think we got to be ready. Well, you, Nathan, what do you think of that? Uh, just kind of going off of that, I yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we change anything. Um, like you said, the you know it's new season. I mean, everyone's zero and zero. Um, obviously, like St. Thomas, they didn't have the you know probably the best year that they were hoping for. But like you said, they are playing some good hockey right now. Uh, I think the last couple weekends they've uh, they've gave some good teams uh, some good games, and um, you know we're we're just going to try and play our game, right? We're just going to play uh, the style that we know how. We're not going to you know, feed into the other stuff. And, you know, we, we do have a target on our back, I would I would assume. And, um, at, you know, nobody likes to get beat all the time. And so I think they're going to come out hard. They're going to be physical, and we just need to match that. Did you guys learn anything last year? I mean, last year was such a strange year because of COVID, but uh, um, you, you get knocked out of the semifinals. And I know things were weird, but uh, just because of not having a lot of fans in the stands and things like that. But, uh, and I don't know if that led to what happened the following week where you, you know, you, you win your first NCAA game and, and, and make it to the NCAA tournament. But um, I, I don't know, was it, was that, was there a moment last year in that uh, semifinal game where, you know, you kind of look back on that and kind of realize kind of what maybe you have to do uh, in the playoffs this year, Julian? Um, I mean, just learning from it, I would say like uh, last year wasn't, that was not a great game for us. I think everybody knows that getting blown out by like that. So just like learning from it and uh, going day by day, just not taking taking a day for granted or a week for granted or like it's it's not the not the NCAA tournament yet. It's the playoffs, but uh, it's not less important. So just just taking a day by day and not like getting getting ahead of any, anything. Is, is there, a, a, you know, I think people, it's human nature, I think, for people to look at, you know, you win a McNaughton Cup, you have the number one seed, you're high up in the pairwise, and even looking at Michigan Tech that that weekend um, and wondering, like, okay, what does either team have to play for? Tech's got some pairwise to, to play for, but they're locked into second place. You guys already knew at that point who your opponent was going to be in the first round of the CCHA tournament. Um you know, so I think it's human nature as fans and, and people observing to say like, all right, what do they have to play for? So when it comes down to that, what, you know, in, in a weekend like that where, you know, nobody's resting. I know you guys got, had a few guys injured. Um, what What is kind of the goal and the mentality? Is just, just to keep uh, keep rolling? I mean, I, I know you're all competitive and you want to win. So that that's, uh, that's probably number one. But, you know, what are you looking at, you know, going into um, both – these playoffs because you're always you know people are looking at the NCAA tournament or or last weekend yeah I mean I mean we're we're playing for pairwise too um mm-hmm. I mean obviously it's once you get into the NCAA tournament it really doesn't matter like what seed you are and coach touched on that a little bit today uh how previous years he's been a one seed and got knocked out by the by the four seed and so I think we just need to be like the idea of us playing to win um, it's just that's our mentality. You know, we're we're always going to come out and play to win. Uh, it doesn't really matter like what position we're in as far as first or if we're in, you know we're playing for a spot in the in the playoffs or the tournament or something. Our mentality doesn't change, and the way we play isn't going to change. So, so you're trying you know you're trying to tweak things and perfect things and make sure that uh, uh, things are clicking in certain ways. But I, and and then also I, I assume um, you know just 
finding ways to win games, like we mentioned, and those were tough games last weekend. And mm-hmm. is that part of you know, it, if you can find different ways to win games, it seems like that that does you a lot of favors going forward. You don't always have to win the same way. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so you know, this season it, it's so it's so tough for players. I think um, as a as a person who really enjoys college hockey, whether I was writing about it or or doing the podcast or just sitting in the stands. Uh, you know, do you guys get to enjoy these wins? I mean, it's such a grind of a season, and you're going through, and, um, you know, it's always kind of the next game up, and you, you win a championship, and then you're off to the the next uh, set of playoffs. And um, do you get to kind of enjoy this season as it's gone on? And, and certainly it's it's been fun this year with crowds, and whether it was up at Tech last weekend, looked like nice crowds there, and certainly what you guys have had at home. But, uh, you know, do you get a chance to, to look and enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, I think I can speak for everyone on our team and staff, and we definitely enjoy and um, love winning and uh, what we got going here. And I, I think, um, yeah, you, you always got to move on, and you can't live in the past with winning or winning McNaughton or um, having the record we had and stuff. But you have to enjoy it, and it's part of life. You can't, I mean, you <laughs> can't always just be keep going forward, keep going forward. But um, yeah, like I said, I think we all we're all enjoying it every day, and. But still taking it day by day, but um, being proud of ourselves and enjoying the moment. Yeah, Julian. Yeah, I mean, we definitely make sure that uh, we enjoy those those wins. Like that, those are big, especially in it last weekend. Uh, it's two really hard games. Um, there's always room for for us enjoying those wins. But um, like you said, as soon as Monday comes around, we gotta we gotta right. flip the page, like Coach always says. And but uh, we do make sure that we enjoy that time. That's good. Nathan? Yeah, I mean, we do enjoy <laughs> it, um, but I think the mentality is, like, we have a winning mentality. We, we, we try to never be satisfied. Um, so when, once we do enjoy it, like you said, it's Monday or coming around, and, uh, it's you know, we just try to get better, we try to get better and improve on things because there's always room to improve. And, um, you know, going late into, uh, into the season, we know it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. Every team's good. Um, and like you said, you know, we it's it's good for us to play these two games this last weekend and have have to win different ways, and, and that's going to be important down the road. Sounds good. Well, best of luck uh, going forward in the CCHA playoffs starting this weekend against St. Thomas. Best two out of three starting Friday night in Mankato with the number one seed Minnesota State Mavericks and the number one team in the country, both in the opinion polls, which no one really uh, gives much opinion about, and the pairwise, which is most important. Um, but uh, good luck, guys, and uh, we'll we'll be watching and um, uh, appreciate you uh, joining uh, the podcast this week. Uh, Thank thanks you. for having Thank us. You. Absolutely. All right. So, Cade Borchert, Nate, Julian Napravnik, Nathan Smith, uh, thanks for joining me. I'm Shane Frederick. This has been the Maverick Hockey Live podcast, presented by Duncan, and we'll see you next week.